Hello goddesses, good afternoon. And we'll just wait a few moments. And I hope everybody is having a nice start to their weekend. It's funny as I think many of us, if not all, are probably in quarantine. I was thinking it's almost like one day just kind of comes into the next. So it seems a little bit less like a weekend for me and more just like a regular day. So the kids are around, I did some writing and they're gardening now, but those are things that we do every day now. But I hope, um, hope you are well and healthy. So we'll just get started in just one minute. Great, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about Mary Magdalene. And some might not consider her a goddess, but she really has a lot of the attributes of a goddess that we would have. And it's interesting too, because when I originally scheduled this, when I was kind of laying out the goddesses that we were going to talk about, I didn't do this planned, but it's actually Easter weekend. So it's kind of interesting that we're talking about Mary Magdalene on Easter weekend as well too. So on Good Friday, Jesus was crucified. And then on Sunday, and Mary was with Jesus when he was crucified, on Sunday, she found the tomb empty. And then she was also the first to see him for his, from his resurrection as well, too. So although I didn't plan it serendipitously, the goddess had us discussing Mary Magdalene this weekend. So I think that's, um, I think that's really interesting. So I'm going to talk to Mary Ma about Mary Magdalene in relation to overcoming beliefs. And um, I also just wanted to point out, because out of all of the goddesses that we've talked about, she's probably the newest goddess for me. So I've been doing a lot of reading and research. And I also am going to post some great articles that I found online in case you guys are interested, because I'm really starting to find this fascinating. But I also just wanted to share some books, too. So there's... Um, this book, The Meaning of Mary Magdalene by Cynthia Borgol, which is has is great, and I haven't quite finished this one yet. But then there's also this one, Mary Magdalene Revealed by Megan Watterson, and I've actually read this one twice. So these are both great books, so if you are interested in learning more about Mary, I highly recommend that you get them. And again, I'll put these in our group as well, along with some, some articles that I have found that have been really helpful to me to kind of understand her history and her influence. Um, but I also wanted to get started by reading a quote. So I often read quotes that I think invoke the goddess's energy because whether we know it or not, their energy is all around us, like whether it's in other literature, whether it's in music, it's in nature. But it's, sometimes I think quotes that have nothing to do with the goddess are also just a good way just to kind of start understanding or starting to feeling her, her intention. So this one is from Marianne Williamson, and I'm sure if you guys are already probably familiar with it, but I did want to read it because it's just when I think of Mary Magdalene, this is sort of the, this is the quote, the energy that comes to mind. So it's, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. So I will, um, I'll add that quote to the group as well, too, because I think it's something that it's good to refer back to, especially as we start talking about overcoming limiting beliefs. So to get started, maybe you can just even just get a comfortable seat if you're not already there. And I kind of just like to close your eyes and just start thinking, taking a moment, just kind of thinking about the goddess's energy. So in this case, Mary Magdalene. In the way when I think of her, it's like, imagine if you offered yourself encouragement on all of your endeavors, whether it be a relationship, a career, or a creative project. So you knew you brought the world a unique perspective that others would find valuable. And you knew that you were lovable and that you would make a terrific partner. And you had the skills and focus to tackle even the most ambiguous projects. And when you faced roadblocks on your journey, you understood that they weren't a reflection of your abilities, just but simply obstacles to overcome and a chance to prove your resourcefulness. And since you were confident in your abilities, 
You'd be excited and eager to share your gifts with the world. So you'd be unstoppable. But unfortunately, we don't always offer ourselves this type of encouragement. In fact, sometimes we act more of a critic than an advocate to ourselves. So we carry these false or limiting beliefs telling us that we're not good enough. And these beliefs were formed early on. So many in the first 14 years of our life, whether it was with interactions with our parents or guardians, or maybe school-aged friends and just personal experiences. But over time, we've turned these interactions into beliefs that actually shape our reality. So some beliefs can be empowering, but others hold us back. So really, it's my intention this week that we can kind of connect with Mary Magdalene to dismantle our limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering ones that will enable us to pursue our dreams, live our lives to the fullest, and really share our gifts with the world. So that's really where I see Mary's energy and how we can tap into that. But first, I wanted to l l talk a little bit about the goddess's story. So just the history of Mary Magdalene, which I think, um, like I said, I'm just starting to learn and just starting to scratch the surface and I really find it fascinating. So I'll share some resources for you guys, but um, just to give an overview of just who she is and what she's done. So she's probably one of the most misunderstood goddesses. And in fact, you know, many don't even consider her a goddess at all. However, she has many of the attributes that a goddess has and was worshiped as a goddess by her devotees. So for centuries, the Catholic Church had claimed that she was a prostitute, really downplaying her importance in Christianity. And she's also, even though she was mentioned by name in all four of the canonical Gospels, and in other Gospels, she has an even larger role. So Mary Magdalene was one of the women who stayed with Jesus when he was crucified, and his male disciples had all run away. She was also there for the resurrection. And that's why she's actually often referred to as the Apostle of Apostles. So there are some schools of thought that believe Mary was Jesus' consort, like maybe his wife. In the Gospel of Philip, it's suggested that he had said that Jesus loved her most of all of the disciples and that he often kissed her, and they think it's on the mouth. I think part of that text got um, blurred, but that's what people believe that it says. And the Gospel of Mary text, which both of the books that I had showed you guys about talk about, was found in Egypt in 1896. And then from this body of work, we can infer that Mary had a better understanding of a lot of Jesus' original teachings than a lot of his male disciples. In the Gospel of Luke, it states, states that Jesus cast the seven demons out of Mary Magdalene. Now that makes it sound like she had specific psychological impairments, but more likely it's the seven demons are just egoic states that we all have, that we all need to dispel to spiritually awaken. So based on that research, it appears that Mary overcame these states. So like Jesus or the Buddha and other spiritual masters, that she was an enlightened human. So the goddess had to confront doubt of others, both while she was alive, as well as thousands of years after her death. So it wasn't until 2016 did Pope Francis actually declare a feast day for Mary, which is on June 22nd, which put her on equal footing as her male apostles. So throughout her life, Mary believed in her own possession of the truth, and she was confident in her understanding of Jesus' teachers, teachings. Like, though her male counterparts often tried to downplay her importance, she never sm played small to be more well-received. And in fact, she played so big that her, important had actually been, her importance had actually been de-emphasized for thousands of years. But as we know, the truth always starts to come out, and I think that's why we're starting to see more books and more information on her. But I think we can look to Mary Magdalene to help us dispel our limiting beliefs. So sometimes our beliefs don't come from others not believing that we're worthy or not, but it actually comes from ourselves. And they get really ingrained. So we're going to look a little bit to see where we got them and how we can gain the confidence to be in our divine, go, to be on our way in our divine path. So that's really a little bit about the history. So if anybody has any questions right now, you can type them in and I'll try to answer them. So let's talk about her a little bit in modern society. So one of the things that I often think about is that, you know, we often throw, scroll through social media or we compare ourselves to friends and others and we can feel like we're not measuring up or we can see the success of others in areas that we want to be and we assume that it's all been done before, that there's no point in even trying. So we can tell ourselves things like, I'm too old to do that, or I'm too inexperienced, or no one's ever going to love me. So these are things that we kind of tell ourselves, even if we don't tell ourselves so explicitly, 
we can have these thoughts, whether I'm not attractive enough or I'm not smart enough. And it, these thoughts just keep us from playing small. And they prevent us from achieving the things that we the most desire, whether it's a healthy relationship or a successful career, or being financially just financially secure. Because they keep us from playing small so that we don't risk failure or disappointment. And unfortunately, many beliefs have been planted in our belief system from a very young age. So like either by parents who didn't know any better, or had their own issues, or sometimes kids whom we interacted with who clearly wouldn't know any better. But it's really, I think, our job as goddesses to begin to recognize these limiting beliefs for what they are, which are lies, or I think if you're familiar with the Course in Miracles, they call it the tiny mad ideas, ideas that, egos tell, that our ego tells us. And we could begin to dismantle them and reinforce more empowering, positive beliefs. So the first thing to do is to recognize them. So if we consider we've had these for so long, it can almost seem like second nature. And it's really our small self, our ego, that's just telling us these things. And she's doing it to protect us, our ego, but it's really just making us not be able to achieve the things that we want to achieve. So it's really no way to live. So what we're gonna try to do is identify those beliefs and then come up with new empowering ones. So just like Mary Magdalene had to remain confident in herself and like her understanding of the teachings and her relationship with Jesus, whatever that may be, I, I don't know, um, despite what everyone else had said, we also need to cultivate that same level of confidence in ourselves. So we're always gonna have critics, and but we're often the biggest critic. It, so it's our ego just telling us that we're not good enough. Um, there was a talk that I was listening to by Gabby Bernstein. So some of you guys may know her by, um, she also teaches A Course in Miracles. She has a bunch of different books, but it was a talk that she was listening to and someone had asked her, does the ego ever stop talking? And that's really the voice that gives us our limiting beliefs. And she said, no, but eventually you stop believing it. I love that because it really gets to that this is our lifelong practice practice. Like we're always going to be hearing these negative comments in our head about whether we should be doing something or something. And sometimes it's directed towards others. But it's really our work to kind of like start recognizing it as okay, that's just not true. And you don't believe it. And you can choose again. So you start to choose more loving and affirming thoughts. So you also might be thinking that too, well, how do I know the difference between, you know, the ego or like my goddess self? And, you know, if you're hearing different things like maybe your goddess self is trying to protect you but there's a few ways so the ego speaks really loudly and your higher self will speak really softly so they don't fight she, your higher self won't fight for your time so you can start to hear your higher self through meditation and also the ego is really urgent and she wants her point made now where the higher self is patient the ego is also very judging we are the higher self is encouraging so with practice, you can start to kind of hear where, where your ideas are coming from, and you can choose to ignore the ones that are no longer empowering. So that's really, again, what we're going to try to do here. So um, I was just going to talk a little bit about limiting beliefs and my life, just to kind of get an idea. Maybe it would be helpful as you start to consider how they show up in your own life. And I started to notice that sometimes they're a little bit easier to identify looking in hindsight. So now, you know, I can look back at my younger days and like I can see that I had ideas like, well, I wasn't likable enough, which prevented me from wanting to expand my friends friendships or believing that I wasn't lovable enough, which caused me to stay in relationships for longer than I should have because I feared being alone or believing that I didn't really have anything compelling to say, which prevented me from sharing my ideas. So these are things that like, I've told myself, and you know, I have played small and just kind of went by the book about what I should be doing and never really put myself out there. But then like sometime in my 30s, and I began to feel that I wasn't really living up to my potential. So I played it safe for so much of my life that I felt that I wasn't like living my truth anymore. And there was more in my life that I wanted to be doing. So I really started at that point to start identifying some of the beliefs. And some of them were from when I was younger, like the ones I had mentioned. But then some I picked up along the way. Like, I'm no longer desirable, or I'm too old to start a new career, or I don't have enough experience, or people won't take me seriously. So those are some of the beliefs that I've 
been working to dismantle. Because then at 39 years old, with two kids, I decided to stop listening to those beliefs. And I got divorced at 43, I left a well-paying corporate job shortly after that, and I started dismantling some of these beliefs and replacing them with like new empowering beliefs. So now it's more like I'm healthy and active and I embrace my sexuality and I'm exactly the age I need to be to do the things that I want. My life is my experience. And people will benefit from the things that I have to say. And um, I know this may sound kind of rote to really start identifying them and start replacing them with the new, newer beliefs, but it's really the only way that we can go about doing it. But really first is observation. So it's not like we can just do this once, like identify them, replace them, and then it's all done. This is something that we have to do all the time, so every single day. So I'm going to upload a worksheet as well too to get you to start thinking about maybe limiting beliefs that have held you back. And then for each limiting belief, you're going to create a more empowering belief. So basically not believing that belief anymore. And it can be done. So the last several years, you know, I've really had to redefine all of my beliefs so I could live the way that I feel like I've been called to live. And since I've started doing that, I really feel like I have been rewarded greatly. I finally have attracted a relationship that is much healthier than the relationships I've been in the past. And I'm doing something that I really love and enjoy. And I also feel like it's been setting a good example for my children as well. Just showing them that we don't need to play small or we don't need to play in boxes. So this week, it's my intent that we can connect with Mary Magdalene to start noticing and shaking off our limiting beliefs so we can invoke our inner goddess goddess. Because when we're free from those tiny mad ideas that the small self tells us, we have the power to own our story, share our wisdom, and shine our light. So as I mentioned, I'm going to update the workbook with just some ways that you can start identifying and replacing your beliefs. And meditation is really important too. And I know I say that for all of the goddesses, but it really does give us a way when we have a regular meditation practice. It just gets us in the habit of we can observe our thoughts as they're going through, but we don't fuse with them or we don't attach ourselves to them. So it gives us a little bit of distance between what we're thinking and how we're feeling. And if we notice that we're having a disempowering thought, we can simply choose not to engage with it. We can choose another thought. So I think meditation is going to be super important working with this goddess. So I'll probably schedule a couple more meditation practices that we can do together as well because I find those helpful. So you guys can be on the lookout for the books. I will give you guys information about the books as well as some articles online that I have found. The Limiting Beliefs Mary Magdalene worksheet that I'll upload. And I'm going to add some additional goddess group meditations that we can do together this week. So, and that's it. So let me just see, Turkin, you just asked a question. You have a hard time being aware of them most of the time, and that's why I ignore this practice most of the time. Is there any tips we can work on them more effectively? Yes, it is, and it's funny. I, I don't know if you joined. Actually, I said sometimes they're easier to notice in hindsight. Like if you look back like 10, 15 years, you can be like, oh, yeah, well, like I thought that, but now that I can see clearly. It is hard to do them in the present, and I think that's where meditation comes in so much is identifying them but also whenever we're judging ourselves or being critical that's generally a limiting belief as well too so you know if we think of the way that our ego talks to us or our higher self so our higher self is going to be encouraging and the ego is going to be like the one like oh are well, you sure you can do that so it's also anytime that you feel that you're judging yourself or you're just being critical of yourself that's what you kind of have to look at. And it also helps to think back too, like where did those ideas come from? Because I mean, a lot of them do come from very early on and from school, but we carry them and then we reinforce them as well too. You know, it kind of becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like if I'm not good at relationships, you feel that way, you end up dating people that may, that you feel that you would have an upper hand with and the relationship still doesn't isn't great so it ends up being kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy but it's um it's a good question and yeah I understand so I'll try to come up with some ideas as well too throughout the week about how we can better identify our limiting beliefs but even if you want to take some time and like I said like look back like five years and like just look at like maybe some of your behaviors and then you can kind of start to see like well you know, I thought that, you know, I wasn't attractive enough, but I look at pictures now, you know, there's just, there's things that 
we think at the time, and then we can see in the future how that may have misled us, if that makes sense. But um, does anyone have anything else, any questions or anything that they want to share or talk about? Okay, well, I have a lot of things that I want to add to the group for you guys to take a look at. And like I said, I'll add some more meditations and also maybe add some tips for thinking about your your limiting beliefs. Again, I'm, as I think about it, I really think it's just when you identify that there's something critical or something saying a reason that you can't do something. Like, so I did, said from my experience, it's like, oh, well, you're too old or you don't have enough experience or, so it's the critical things that we tell ourselves to prevent us from even trying. But um, I hope you goddesses have a wonderful Saturday. I hope everybody is healthy, safe, and staying sane. And um, I will speak to you all soon.